As for today's session, inshallah, we'll deal with technology. And as for today's session, we have some learning outcomes. The first one is to get access to a range of online platforms that could help you design and adapt your activities to incorporate technology into your teaching. The second outcome for today would be to be able to select websites that are suitable to use in your context as a teacher. The first part will be about evaluating and selecting websites. Websites. Yes, it would be about how we can evaluate and select the websites and are there certain criteria that we need to put in mind while choosing a certain website for our students? We will watch this video, but while watching, I want from you all to know the statements or the steps that we as teachers can use or should put in mind while choosing or selecting websites for our learners, okay? So, we're going to do what? Watch Listen and video. select Watch the Watch a video one. and uh, write the steps. Thank you so much. By the way, it has no sound. Okay. Now, let's see the statements. Take a minute and put these statements in the right order. Which one comes first? Search for a suitable website. Check the site, comment. I think first uh, we should think about but your new So it is easy to Okay, yes, Miss Nagda, you're right. Mm. After that, mm -hmm. uh, check uh, the site uh, is accurate. Easy to read. Uh, check the site content uh, is right for your learner's level. Any other ideas? Uh, check the site is accurate. No, it's search for a suitable website. Search for a suitable website? Yes. yes. Okay, and here's the correct order. So, the first one is to think about your aims. And as for the aims, when they are clear in front of us as teachers, by the end of the lesson, we would know either we have covered them or not. 
and when we cover them or achieve them, this means that our lesson was a successful one. Or your teaching was a successful one. So I need to think about my aims and what kind of material I need. As for the second step is to search for a suitable website and that would help me to achieve my aims. The third one, to check the site is easy to use because I don't want something complicated for my students. I don't want to explain how to use a site for 30 minutes, for example, for them, and then they do the activity in five minutes. So I have wasted a whole class or period of my time. That doesn't make sense. So I want to make sure that it's easy to use as for the website. Number four, we're after accuracy. By accuracy, we mean it doesn't include any mistakes. After that, if it isn't accurate, choose a different website. Don't stick to it. If it has like spelling mistakes, grammatical mistakes, don't stick to it. Choose another one. There are plenty of them. After that, check the site content because sometimes the content could be nice and has nice activities, but the content could be difficult to form my students' level. And of course, we're after two things, the content and the level here. Then we prepare uh, our lessons using the resources that we have selected. Here we have our first platform for today. It's Kahoot. Have you ever tried it before? Yes, I think I tried it before. Can you tell us your idea or experience regarding this platform? Uh, it is a good platform for making quiz. Uh, during the class and uh, as a homework or assignment, mm -hmm. um, but it only uh, focus on two main uh, questions. Mm -hmm. uh, two is choose the correct answer, mm -hmm. uh, and the second is true or false, mm -hmm. but the others are paid. Yes. Um, I, I think it is a good uh, example for making uh, tests um, as the whole this nowadays uh, as secondary school, mm -hmm. all of them is choose from the correct answer. It's a good way to give uh, homework or assignment for uh, students. Yes, thank you so much, mister. Okay, as for, yes, I know you are. Thank you so yes, much. Thanks. As for this platform, as Mr. Muhammad said, we would have an activity. The activity here is called what is climate change? This is a kind of activity that we can use with our students. We will go to this website or platform and to use this link. I'll send you the link on the chat box. Go to the website, but we will talk about certain details regarding this platform. In this activity, we're asked to put the statements under the right category. Does it belong to ease of use? Because as we watch it in the video, when we evaluate websites, we're after three main points. Ease of use, it means that it's easy for students to use. As for this page, as we talked about the idea of evaluating websites, we need to put in mind three important points or categories. The first one, ease of use. It means that it's easy for students to use, accuracy and acceptance, to have no grammatical or spelling mistakes, and audience and relevance. As for audience, here are the students. They are the audience of the platform. And relevance it means that it's related to the student's level. When you click on that link, you would go to this page. As you can see here, we would choose to play as a guest. If we are to take the student seats, we would 
play as guests. So in Kahoot, I can use it as a creator, as a teacher, the one who creates or forms the questions or the quiz or to play. And in this part, I would uh, choose to play as guest. And please make sure that your students wouldn't show the answers like the part here on the right. When you click on play as guest, you would go to this page. And we have here two modes, to play as classic or team. Team, if we are the whole class or the whole group, are to play together or against other teams but here because we are individuals we would play in the classic at the top here we have the name of the game which is evaluating website look at this link kahoot.it as for kahoot as we said it has two different links one for the creator and the other for the player Kahoot.it is for the player. And next to it, we have here the game pin. Those are the pin or the numbers that the students need to write to log into the game. When we reach to this screen, we would find here the statement which says waiting for players. It means that you haven't started your game yet. After that, when you write in the search box, Kahoot.it, because you will join as a player, as a guest, you will find this page. And here you have to write the game pin, those numbers, and they click enter. After that, the platform would ask you about your nickname, the name that you want to be shown on the screen to you and your colleagues, and click on OK, go, so you, you're in. Now you are in the game itself. And you have here a choice. See your nickname on the screen? Do you want it to, to be visible or not? As you can see here, this is the name of our player here, L-A, the, the first two letters of her name. And this game, the, the number of participants so far is only one. And on the right here, we have the start button. When she clicked on the start button, this what appeared to here. And as you can see here again, because we are logging as uh, players or guests, we have chosen to log in through Kahoot.it for players, for students. And the first question is, does the information appear to be accurate? And we have here three choices or three categories. This question goes with ease of use, accuracy and acceptance, or audience and relevance. What do you think? Which category does it go with? Accuracy and acceptance. Thank you so much. And as you can see here, we have three shapes. We have the triangle, the diamond, and the circle. This appears for the first time, but this what would appear for the players. You already know that ease of use goes with the triangle, audience, circle, accuracy with the diamond. So all the following questions would have only the three shapes without any statement. The question and the shapes and the students are to choose among them so we're not only after answering that question but to train their memories here this was the part of the students as for you as teacher how to create my own kahoot as for us as teachers we would use this link kahoot.com but as for the students what link would they use kahoot Yes. As for us as teachers, if it's the first time for us, we would click on sign up. By signing up, we would fill after that, write our names, passwords, email, so that all the notifications will be transferred to your email. If you click on login, it means that you have already an account on Kahoot. And all what you need to write is only your name, 
Password. Yes, and password. And when you click enter, you would have this screen. As you can see here, we have this button to create a new Kahoot or a new quiz. And here we have my Kahoots, all the quizzes that I have done before. Sorry. Team space if I'm dividing my class into groups and they are playing in teams. As you can see here on the left, your name as a teacher. And you have the name of your school. Also, you have here a library. It's like mini templates that you can use. And the groups, if you are linked with other teachers who have the same interest and may have the same kind of activities that you do or apply. When we click on create, as you can see here at the top left, create kahoot.com we have here the layout number one this is the quiz and as mr muhammad said we can choose between two types true or false or to choose number two start typing your question the name it's not the name of the game the question that you want to ask the students number three to add the answer you can add one, two answers, till four. Four choices or two, you're free to do that. After that, you can add an image, a photo if you want to, and if you don't, if it would be just the question and the choices, you need it to put a picture. At number five, we have here the time limit. Students can play or answer this question for how long the time would it take but keep in mind if your students level is really low you need them to put a time limit for them because it would be challenging and they wouldn't be able to answer but if they are like good achievers you can of course put a time limit so it depends on the level of your students and the points here, it could be one point for each question. If the question is like hard, you can put two points or more. As for add question, this is when you're done with the first one and you want to put the second and the third, you know. After you finish writing all the quiz that you have, you can share it with your students by one of the following platforms. The easiest one, you would have here the link and you would copy and paste it to the WhatsApp group, for example. Or you can share it on Facebook with the students, if it is a group or something, or on Twitter, but this doesn't have it in our classes here, or on Google Classroom. And here we can search email if you know the email of your students and you want to write them down one by one. You would search and send the quiz to them. This is your part here to visit createkahoot.it and to register. You're asked to register on Kahoot and try to use or make a quiz on it and show it to us. Please try to do this. It would be fun. And it wouldn't take so long time or so much time from you. Okay? Try to create your own Kahoots and send them on the WhatsApp group. And we can play it together, you know? You can put a minimum two questions. The second platform that we have today is Jamboard. And what is it? And how to create your own Jamboard. If you have a Google account, click on the dot shape. Look at here. If you click on home for Google, you would have here the dots on the right, either on your mobile or on your laptop. Okay? And when you click on the dots shape, you will be taken into the different features that Google has. This board including Google Classroom and the Cloud, Cloud Print. But here we have the Jamboard. When we clicked on Jamboard here, we will go to this page. And on the right side, you have a plus sign. That's it. This is to create a new Jamboard. 
and when you click on it, you will find this white sheet. On the left side, all the tools that you can use for your jump board. It's similar to the word, by the way. We have here the eraser, the highlighter, the pen, and we can put different shapes or highlight them. And at the top here, if you want to add more than one page, you can do that. You can clear, it's like to clear all the sheets or set a background like color and so on. On the right side here, we have the share sign. And when we click on it, this is after you finish writing your own quiz. And I think this platform would be suitable for writing essays, paragraphs, because it's easier for students to type on their mobiles than to write. So it would be fun too. When you finish writing the name of your quiz or the title, you can click on share and you will find this page. You can share by two ways. The first one is to get the link to copy and paste on which platform you're using. And as you can see here, anyone with the link and you can make it private and you can make it public for everyone who has the link or only your students. And as for it, the editor, of course, you need the students to write, so you would keep it as editors. Because you would edit and write on the sheet. This is another link we can try together. And as you can see here, we have like a sticky note. Have you ever tried using it in your classes, the sticky notes? Yes. No, for me, no. Okay, no. <laughs> thank you. As you can put different pictures, like the one that we have here, this jump board, and then write to the students, think about an activity that you can use with your students. This is for you as teachers, using jump board and then write it down on a sticky note and paste it here. Okay, the sticky note could be brought from here on the left. And this is the link for Jamboard. Of course, I had send it to you in a minute. And let's all try to log into Jamboard together. Let's follow this link. Can you see it here? This is a model for the Jamboard. Okay. I can use it as a brainstorm activity. Yes. About a week, I want them to write about. It can be used when I want my students to reflect on something we discussed. Like this one, this shape. Yes. So it's nice and students wouldn't take like five minutes finishing this kind of activity. And it would be fun. And they are free to color to put a certain background and navigate the platform on their own, you know. As for the third platform for today, it's Nearpod. And it's one of the favorite platforms that we as teachers can use. Of course, this is the link, nearpod.com. And as you can see here on the right, of course, we know now that to sign up for free for the first time. And if we have an account, we would write only the username and the password. And we have here three categories, students, teachers, and administrators. Of course, we would create our own accounts as teachers. And this is what would appear to us. But here, you need to remember that there is a certain code for students. If you want your students to join any of your activities, you would have your own code, which you can use with your students. And here on the right, the students would write the code that you have given them. And this is how the page or the screen looks like on Nearpod. As for us teachers, we don't have codes. Only students would have codes to make it easier for them to use this website.
as you can see here, we have the code for students to join a lesson. You can have a code for each lesson. And on the left here, we have my lessons, the lessons or the activities that I have prepared before. And we have here the library to search like a database for you. Could be helpful for you to find other activities that you can apply with your students. And if the students are to use Nearbot, they follow the same steps. Here we have the button of create, to create a new one. Play with a demo if you are to play online with your students. And here folder because you can divide them like unit one, unit two, and so on. And we have here a model for your recent work. When you're done with the creating part, you will have here the sharing the screen. All what you need to do is to stand by the right side of the activity name and you will have the sharing screen. If you click on live participation and zoom, this is like us for now. So you are working online with your students. If you are to use the student-based link, this means that you would send this link to the students and they are to watch it whenever they want. So we were talking about the sharing part as for Nearpod. If we are to click on the student-based, it means that it's the student's turn to log in and to use the code that you have provided them and they can play it many times when they want, the way they want. But of course, you as a teacher, if you are to use any of those platforms, please set a, a time limit for the students to finish their work. Look at this screen. As you can see here, we as teachers try to log in to Nearpod and tell us what features does this platform have that you can use with your students. Try to navigate it. Create an activity and send the code to your colleagues for us. And we would be pleased to join you in your Nearpod. The next platform is Badlet. Have you heard or used it before? No? No. Okay. Unfortunately. So it's our chance to try to use any of those platforms because this is a kind of assignment for you for today. Choose, yes, try to use most of them. As for Badlet, it's also a nice platform for students. They like it. How to make your own Badlet? This is the screen that you would see. And as you can see here, make a Badlet. When you click or open the Badlet platform, you will find this screen. And here, if you want your Badlet to look like a wall, like the Facebook and the students would scroll the screen or to stream like the live streaming that we see on uh, Facebook or like a grid like this one and it's also there on Facebook for photos or a shelf like the movies or like a map if you are teaching something related to continents and or countries or a timeline if you are to teach something related to the tenses. Again, when you log in into Badlet, you will find here your name and you have here four choices. To make a Badlet, to create a new one, here the gallery, all the work that you can see and others work. And we have here the recents, your recent work. As for recents, it's divided here for made the ones that you have made by yourself, shared are the ones that you have created or made and then you sent to your students. Unliked because in the gallery, as we do in any platform, we click on like, so you have like a digital memory for all the things that you clicked on like and archived if you are not using them anymore. New folder if you are to create again for units, unit one, two, or topics. And when you finish 
creating or making your own ballot, you would click on join. And join, this is the link that the students would have and would use to go to your own ballot and work on it. This is the screen that we would see when we click on make a ballot. Here again, this is like a task for you to try to find out what are the different features of Badlet and how to create it and use it with your students. And again, to create or start making your Badlet, just click on the plus sign. The next uh, platform is called the Mini Meter. And as it appears from the name itself, you would have uh, by the end of, of the task, students, when the students finish answering or voting to your questions or your work, you will have a percentage. How many did what? We have here the link, minimeter.com. Login, if this is your first time, you would sign up, okay? And we have here example slides like this one. Of course, you can add a picture. And as I told you on the right here, we have when you have the percentage for each activity or each question, how many answered this question correctly, you know? As for Minimeter, we have here my presentations, your library, the things that you have done before. And if you are to make a new one, you would click on new presentation, new folder to divide them into folders. In inspiration, this other's work that you may benefit from. We have here activities for tags. Of course, you will have this PowerPoint so you can log in to each one of those platforms on your own. And this how it looks like. You would have here the screen on which you would write your questions. It could be lengthy question like this one. Tell us an interesting experience you have done in your life. And this is similar to the second one, which is Jamboard. Do you remember? Students are free to write here. And of course, on the right side here, we have type. What type of question it is? content what is it about and customize customize means that the word limit that you want your students to write on here it says audience size limit for quiz competition of more than 2000 people as for this part this is the question so you write it on this screen and it appears here too correct answer to display if it is a short a quiz and if it is a lengthy one you can set the word limits for the students or the word account like 100 words 180 we have here to add a slide if you want to add one more question and we have here you how it would look like to the students and we have here the sharing button and of course, it's now known for us how to share. When we click on share, we would have this page available to join through the code, QR or direct link or closed. You can use code, QR code or the link, this link. Closed for specific students. And here, this is the one with the time limit not to exceed seven days from two days to seven days. And after that, the code would be deactivated. And we have here the QR code. If you and your students are using it, you can download it and send it to them and instead of sending the link. And of course, you know, when we scan the QR code, we go to the quiz directly. Of course, here it asks you to try into a millimeter and make an activity and share it with us. We have here the word wall. And in word wall, it has a variety of activities. As you can see here, we have all the shapes of math that we can use. And as you can see here, it's the only one for math, you know. And as you can see here, we have a word wall.net. This is the link. And it asks you to think about the lesson that you can use with your students. By the way, it could be used with young learners when we're asking them to name the body parts like this part here.
Can you see this picture? To name the body parts. And here, if we are having names of countries or continents and we want to revise the names with them, it would be fun too. And it's colored, they would like it. And again, fit this website because as we agreed, this training course is for us as teachers of English and science and math teachers. This platform is also for science and math. And it's really fun because it has simulations. And of course, all the young learners like simulations so much. When we click on it or this link, we will go to this page. When we click on simulations, we will have all the names of the subjects that are included in this platform. And you will choose the name of the subject. And here, when you log in into the platform, you will find here the name of the subject, physics, and what lesson it will be about. This is sound and waves, for example. And you can choose or set a criteria here. We're focusing on math and grade level. Either they are elementary, middle, or high, or university. And as you can see here, you can create your own simulation or you have a wide variety of activities that you can use with your students. And if you are in, in an official language school, you can use the same thing for your students. When we finish choosing the template or the sample we want to use with the students, we would click on share and we would have here the nearbot so nearbot and fit are connected if i click on my lessons here i have this page this is from nearbot and you would add an activity and after that you would have the fit is one of the sharing options or one of the features that are included in the nearbot Okay, we're done with this session, but it's time to reflect and please tell me your impressions. Do you feel that you can use any of those platforms with your students or not? I think it will be suitable to examine our students. Yes, okay, inshallah, we, are, we will try to use it. They are so beneficial. Okay. Is there a platform that you felt that you wouldn't be able to use or manage? Yes, no. <laughs> I think most of them could be used mm -hmm. uh, even uh, the platform yes, for science and math. Mm -hmm. uh, they could be used as a uh, uh, connect uh, series. Um, can have all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have here this lesson and we will start next time, inshallah, by this activity or action plan or how to apply or use or exploit any of the previous platforms to teach or ask or evaluate students' performance on that lesson, okay? So when you're working on any of those platforms, Put this lesson in mind on how to use or exploit them to teach this lesson or ask about it or make questions about it.